What a way to start a season and what a way to end the year. Welcome to the rent kill initial Killarney Historic Rally. An incredible entry for this year's event. Quality and quantity. And we're here on Moles Gap. We're ready to go. Are you? In the winter darkness, a vast array of cars prepare to take on one of Europe's premier historic events. An incredible entry will witness over 160 starters, and there is plenty on offer to delight fans. From escorts to minis, each one of these cars will be full pelt over some of Kerry's most iconic stages. Into Kalani's Christmas-lit town centre, where plenty of people have braved the chill to hear from the crews ahead of Saturday's start. First up, the 2019 Irish Tarmac Rally champions, Craig Breen and Killarney's own Paul Nagel. It's been a fantastic year in Irish rallying for us and uh, to win here this weekend would probably complete a perfect season in Irish motorsports. But there won't be as much pressure on us here this weekend. I think we're going out to enjoy ourselves and uh, whatever happens, happens tomorrow. Delighted to be here. Obviously, rent kill have been a, a massive supporter of ours this season. Uh, they've kept us going uh, between the Tamai Championship and, uh, and, and some of our driving in the World Championship as well. So glad to be here uh, in, in, in Mike's home and looking forward to a good weekend. Next up, a crew that everyone will have their eye on after a stellar performance at this year's Rally of the Lakes. Kerrymen Rob Duggan and Jay Conway. It's going to be a big change for us compared to the modified car we're used to. Yeah. But um, yeah, a quick test in it yesterday and looking forward to it. Next up, our last year's winners, Owen Murphy and Anthony Nestor. Last year was fantastic. Are we going to see a replay? I'd be hoping so. As you can see, we've got stiff competition around us, but uh, definitely, like, I, I don't know how I was actually beating these in the Zumbin because I got a bit of a freight drive here yesterday. So, uh, we should be good. Once we have a good time up Miles Gap, I'd be fairly confident we could stay with the lads. Within the separate modified category, there is also an impressive lineup. Gary Keenan will no doubt be strong, and he has some great rivals around him. But what about Welshman Jason Pritchard? The British Asphalt Champion for 2019 will compete here for the first time. The Scott Williams boys have prepared a beautiful car, and thank you to Kalani and District Motor Club and Rentical Initial for inviting us over to take part in this rally. Now, I saw on social media you were trying to decide what to do next year. Would it be the British Rally Championship? Would it be the Irish Tarmac Championship? I think you've made your decision by coming here to Killarney. Um, yeah, hopefully you can twist Dad's arm and twist Scott's arm. We can do something, but hey, let's get tomorrow out of the way first. It's not just the drivers who are feeling a bit of pre-event nerves. A lot of work has gone into making this event possible. For Darren McCormick, it's his first time as clerk of the course. Wow, what an undertaking this year. Clark of the course, it's a big event. Yeah, it is a big event. Uh, planning started last two days after the Rally of the Lakes in May. So we've spent the last six months doing all this and it all boils down now to this weekend. Probably won't sleep tonight with nerves, but it, it's looking good anyway so far. The, weather, the weather's on our side, so all good. And after a packed start ramp, it's time to start thinking about getting some sleep. However, with an early start in the morning, spectators will be out of their beds early enough and heading up to the world-renowned opening stage, Moles Gap. It's true to say that a lot was expected from Rob Duggan, which might have been a bit unfair considering it's only his second rally of the whole year. Despite the lack of seat time, Rob delivered the goods on the opening test at Moles Gap, quickest through by eight seconds over his nearest rival. Two second fastest times were to follow, which gave him a lead of 6.6 .6 seconds over Craig Breen as we headed into service. We expected you to be quick, and you were. Are you happy with your performance so far? Yeah, happy enough, yeah. We just kind of kept it steady. I thought there was a lot more time left in the gap, really. We're happy to know we were for, uh, quickest overall in it. So, um, yeah, we'll have to go again now and see can we take another chunk like that over the them three stages, try and get it out to a bit more than 10 seconds. It's only a stall or a spin. So, yeah, we have to try and keep an eye on the boys behind. 
What a season it has been for Craig and Paul. Rallying predominantly at home with some WRC events thrown in for good measure. And now the historic to wind down their season. Left over glass and right, and left over glass, and three right to Titans. 70, late two right 30, for late tight five left Titans, and flat three right and flat one left 70 flat crest 40 right on flat 20. they needed to get to grips and adapt to their new steed the escort after three stages they were second overall and just 6.6 .6 seconds adrift of duggan and crest slowing good 16 late four left sharp over crest we found craig in a nostalgic mood at service <laughs> Yeah, baptism of fire, no power of steering, hitch pattern box, synchro box, it's, uh, it takes a lot of work, but you know, this, is, this is rallying how it was and, you know, back 40 years ago and uh, you know, it gives you an indication of what these guys, these heroes were able to do back then, so but a lot of fun. The Ford Sierra Cosworth four-wheel drive was a sight to behold in the hands of Johnny Greer. Plenty of grunt in the engine to propel him through the stages. He and Kirsty Riddick were in third position after stage three, and the car may have the speed, but it does come unstuck in some areas, as Johnny explains. It's, it's, I love it. It's, it's, it's a big bus and it's a big taxi, but it just it just wants to go forward. It doesn't want to go around corners, but it wants to cover ground. And yeah, had a really really enjoyable time. Just have to manage the brakes. It's a big heavy thing, especially coming down the hill towards the end. But no, I was happy enough. Let's turn now then to last year's winners, Owen Murphy and Anthony Nestor. Six left long and three right push running hard. Remember, slippy. Three right push hard, slippy. 60, flat three left. Don't cut, flat six left. 60, flat pink, four left. Four right, 80, flat five left half long. They got off to a difficult start on Moore's Gap. The first section of the stage run without issue, but time started slipping away. Owen tells us why at the stage end. Owen, come and have a chat with us. You sounded confident last night at the start, but body language wise, am I reading? You're not feeling so much now? We have a big misfire since halfway through the stage. I don't know what it is. It's uh, way down in power, but. Uh... And then this wiper, I'm going to rip it off. It keeps stopping in my face and I nearly went off down the narrow section over. So, uh, not good so far. 2019 forestry champion Cahan McCourt with Grace O'Brien beside was back for more action in Killarney. Seventh overall last year and they were running fifth after three stages. Robert Barrable had tried out his Ford Escort at the Court 20 back in September, so had a fair feel for the car. He and Damien Connolly were six after three stages, but Mr Barrable felt that he could have taken some more risks. I was disappointed with the time up Miles Gap. I don't know, we put it down to we were on a wet tyre, maybe it was a bit too conservative. So are you being a bit braver tyre choice-wise now? Yeah, probably going to go the opposite way now, be too brave. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see what happens, we go for it now and see what happens. Welshman Neil Williams was third overall last year with a stellar performance. Back with Anthony O'Sullivan alongside, they were in seventh after Shanera. A last minute switch from the modified category to the historic for Ryan Lochran, a driver who has great pace as he showed us in Donegal this year. Slightly out of his normal territory though in a historic car, he was in eighth overall with three stages completed. Oh, nice to get some warmth from these cars this morning, Ryan. How was it in there for you? Hi, very difficult, very difficult. That's my first time in left hand today, first time on a historic car, so it's definitely not what I'm used to. So. But I enjoyed it, I definitely enjoyed it, just very difficult. Alan Ring is certainly no stranger to these roads. A lot of work has gone into preparing the BMW M3 to be ready for this weekend, and it was looking pretty special through the stages. I've seen you in some nice cars over the years. I'm loving this, though. What was it like through Moore's Gap? It was good. Um, we're still learning the car, but it's very sippy. We didn't take any big chances, so I mean, we gave a bit of time away, but enjoying the car. Uh, we're going to just take a bit of time getting used to it. 
Martin Doherty and Kevin Flanagan weren't far behind ring, with a good battle forming at the back end of the top ten. Our Irish tarmac rally historic champion Duncan Williams made his return to Ireland and is always a welcome sight, if not a little ragged in sections on the opening tests. We're a bit slow in there, I'm afraid. It was uh, wrong tyres on the back and uh, no grip, so a uh, bit of a slow time. But we're still here. Hey, you're still here and there's plenty, plenty more stages to go as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah, looking forward to it. With hazard lights blazing through Moll's Gap, it wasn't the best of starts for Ray and Joey Hilliard. With lines like he was warming tyres, something was definitely amiss. A certain amount of gears, it seems. Now, come on! With this brightly coloured car, you can't go past, Ray. How was it? Uh, it was very bad, look. Very... Oh, no! Gear's gone. So, what, what you... have you got any gear? First gear, the whole way through. Oh, no! Disaster. So, uh, we'll fix it. We'll be around the second time. <laughs> Luke McCarthy and David Hogan were climbing the leaderboard. After Moll's Gap, they were 16th overall, but up to 12th after stage three. A brief view of Tommy Hayes getting ready to fire out the notes for Johnny O'Connor. Tommy has a very calming voice, which comes into full swing in a few moments. Five right plus over small crest, 130. Six right, steady, 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 Johnny, steady, you're all right. Good save from Johnny, calmness personified from Tommy. They were 14th overall. A welcome return to Belgian crew Paul Lieta and Mark Knopper, competing in Killarney for the fourth time in their iconic Opel Manta, shimmying its way over Moll's Gap. Todd Falvey and Ila McCarthy were just a handful of seconds behind Lieta. Keeping it in the family with the Falvies, Mark next up. Former winner of this event and second overall last year. It wasn't going quite to plan this time, however. We had a good time in Black Beam. We were only five or six slower than the two boys in front of us. And then there's two balls broke here in the axle just at the first junction in Shanra. And of course, I, I hadn't much handling, so I just tipped the front of it and I had the limp through. I didn't really know what was what was wrong, so the boys are at it there, John Mine and Owen, my brother and them, so hopefully we'll get out and just yeah, I was gonna say, get it. How much time have we got left we're, we're fairly, We haven't much now, but sure, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll have a bit of fun for the evening if we can. Fun is ultimately what it's all about, and the fans were certainly getting a lot of it, whether they were out on the stages or at service watching the live stream of the event. All bases were covered. Let's take a look then at the leaderboard after three completed stages so far here at the Rentakill Initial Killarney Historic Rally. Duggan leads over Breen by 6.6 .6 seconds with Greer in third, Murphy fourth and McCourt fifth. We're going to come back for some of our modified cars a little bit later on, so join us for that. Welcome back to the Rent-A-Kill Initial Killarney Historic Rally. The Kingdom of Kerry is our playground this weekend and these ruggedly beautiful landscapes are playing host to eight competitive stages. While Moore's Gap is known the world over for its place in rallying and tourism, there is a business here which thrives on both. 
We're at the legendary Moles Gap stage, and on the Gap itself is the beautiful Avoca store, which sees all the action. It's perfectly placed. I'm with Eileen, who runs the store. Eileen, it's beautiful to be inside this store, but you. you are very well placed for the rally here. We certainly are, yeah. I think um, Moles Gap is recognised as one of the most iconic stages, and we're very happy to share it on a weekend like this. Lots of spectators come up here, mm -hmm. of course, and Avoca has this beautiful shop and also a fabulous restaurant as well. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that is preparing all kinds of beauties for the spectators. Yes, absolutely. Um, during this rally, we open the cafe in the morning at seven o'clock because the spectators are here. They're often cold and often hungry. So we're very happy to open the, the cafe for them. And it obviously brings extra business for us as well. Um, so, yeah, we're delighted to do that. What's it like to see the rally cars spinning by outside? Because it must be so unusual and out of place for the normal trade. It's very exciting, yes, because normally um, motorists are very careful around these roads because, as you can imagine, there are tours, there are tour buses, there are all sorts of traffic, so everybody drives very carefully. So it's wonderful to see the, the um, cars coming up from Killarney towards here at full speed. It's very, very exciting for us. From our cafe, there's a wonderful view, but literally anywhere from around here when you stand outside. It's absolutely amazing. Very exciting, yes. Let's get back to the action and down to the start of Moles Gap, where we catch up with our modified crews who are waiting to head in for the first time. Again, a hugely competitive lineup within this field. One of the main protagonists would not make it through Moles Gap, however. And off for the first modified on the road, Chris Armstrong early on would end his day prematurely. Colin O'Donoghue and Sean Collins were next through and admitted to being distracted after passing by Armstrong. They were third after stage one but went into the lead on Balak Beamer, further extending their advantage on Shanera over Kiernan. How are you feeling after the first three? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm actually overwhelmed to be fair it's my home rally and I'm driving one of these is absolutely a dream come true so to be up with the likes of Gary and, and Martin McGee is absolutely class like so I'm just very happy to be here and be part of it. A pretty modest O'Donoghue there. Let's switch to Gary Keenan now who had led after stage one and was still in a fantastic battle with Colin for the top spot. Just 6.2 seconds separated them. There had been an incident, however. Welcome back to the service park. We're going to have a chat with Gary Keane and come and talk to me about the rear left here. She's taken a little bit of a blow there. What's happened? Yeah, just on a long four eight Titans, uh, the car broke away from me, sort of. Uh, just heading into the corner and uh, we got away lucky, just kept the boot in and it broke away and eventually clipped the wall on the outside of the corner. Uh, we're lucky it didn't hit it further in or it would have pulled in the front of it, so I'm happy still to be going. <laughs> Third placed overall after three stages were Martin and David McGee. You can see from their onboard a warning from the marshal as they pass the stricken car of Armstrong. Stay right for a tight four left. 60. Three left, tightens to late, six. Six left, oh, six left, six right, 40. They then catch up with Jason Pritchard, but with such a narrow stretch of road, it's hard for Pritchard to let them pass. Full five right, two left, and very long three right, oh, very long three right, and a tight four left at the same. And full five right, two left. The black Toyota Corolla of Ray Conlon and Damien Fleming were in fourth overall, but were under pressure from local lads Aidan and Shane Buckley, who were just two tenths of a second behind and in the midst of a mighty fight with a good few drivers. One right over flat crest, 130, one left, 150 up the middle to carry short three right, bit of care in it, 350. Well done. Middle flat crest, 150. All the way up to four left of the Chevron. Good grip. 
We were very cautious in there, it's very, very slippy, and we just have a new setup on the car, so we're just trying to get used to it again. Yeah, yeah. In, what, in what way, a new kind uh, of setup? New suspension. Okay. Yeah, so just trying to get used to that, really, and um, found it very, very uh, slippy inside there. Conor Murphy and Kieran O'Donoghue, again locals here, were putting on a fine display. Second time at this event for Conor, and he was sixth, just two tenths behind Buckley. It is always fantastic to see Charlie Hickey out on the stages, veteran of this event, but this time without son Johnny at his side. Johnny on assistant clerk of the course duties means that Donna Crowley steps in. Car sponsored by rent kill who just happened to sponsor the entire event. The event has gone from strength to strength and hopefully Rentikill's involvement in promoting the event has helped create a pan-European buzz for the rally fraternity. The rally has managed to attract big name drivers such as Craig Breen, Rob Duggan, in the past Jimmy McRae, Jason Pritchard, Paul Leiter, I suppose if you combine that with the best marshals, the best organisers and of course the beauty of Killarney and Kerry thrown in for good measure, the kingdom of Kerry in fact. Mike, with all the live coverage you're going to see this year, it means an international audience have access to the beauty of the Kingdom of Kerry and the action on the stages. Are you hoping to attract an international competitor base? Yes, in the future, Bex, we certainly are. Uh, even though we're a global company, we care about how we support local. We feel that the rally is an ideal event to do that. So by promoting the rally across Europe, we help to attract international visitors to Killarney, which helps in turn boost tourism and generate more business for the local community. It's tight at the top in the modified category. O'Donoghue leads the way with Kiernan and McGee not far behind. The scenery may be stunning here in the Kingdom of Kerry, but the action on the stages has been even better so far today. Make sure you join us after the break. Welcome back to the rent -a kill initial Killarney Historic Rally. It's time to head into Moles Gap, Balak Bima and Shanera for the second time. It's a tight battle at the front of the historic and modified field, and there's plenty to keep the spectators warm out on the stages. The weather has held, just the odd shower here and there as we head into the afternoon, and conditions now are starting to improve. Rob Duggan and Jay Conway quickest again on the gap and rounded out Shanero with the fastest time to extend his advantage over Breen to exactly 10 seconds. Hopefully we can kind of keep him behind us if he doesn't take a, a big chunk in the first one. Uh, yeah, we should be kind of OK, but Kilcummins a long stage, a lot of junctions. We just have to keep it tidy you now, but you can't really back off because he's coming hot too, so I'm sure he'll be gunning for us, but he's not going to get this off me that easy, so if Paul wants it, he'll have to push Craig very hard. For Breen and Nagel, the second running of Moore's Gap would prove to be slippy in the worst way. 60, early, two left, oh, far, oh, you bastard. Something's wrong with you, Paul. Uh, yeah? Yeah. He just broke away? Yes. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. And there he is. And there he is. And there he is. Titan watches go Lyle down here. Titan 3 plus sharp. Precious seconds lost, which almost doubled Duggan's advantage. Breen would be fastest, however, on Balak Beamer. And after the loop, he was fairly philosophical. The gap with a, with a, a spin on the oil and the gap probably dropped the guts of. I, I don't know until I see the camera, but it felt 10 or 15 seconds. So, uh, yeah, lead of the rally there, gone, unfortunately. But um, took five back in Ballet Beamer, four back Ballet Beamer, and Rob's taking a second there now in the last one again, so 10 seconds. But to have the historic cars doing the times they're doing is absolutely incredible, you know, when you compare them to the modified cars, you know, it's never been like that before, so it shows the level of the, the, the historic pace, so I'm just glad to be a part of it. 
keeping an eye on proceedings in the service park and on the stages is 2003 world champion co-driver Phil Mills, owner of Viking Motorsport, who have prepared Craig's Escort this weekend. A huge amount of work and a fair amount of love goes into these machines. You know, escorts are a massive thing over here in Ireland. I think there's 130 of them here this week. I know, it's, it is absolutely extraordinary. It is the market to be in, so it was a very good reason for coming as well. But it is incredible, isn't it, that a 45-year-old car still has such an iconic place in rally sport. Isn't it nice to see a, a WRC driver right at the sharp end of the WRC, you know, leading Rally Finland and so on, getting out of a car like that and having a giggle and saying that's the best stage I've ever done in my life. Um, comments like that are just awesome, yeah. Back into the stages then. Johnny Greer said he could imagine how Francois Delacour felt in the Sierra. Sadly for Greer and Riddick, or is it Delacour and Pavels, as it was in the 90s? The love affair with the Q8 liveried Sierra ended on stage six with a broken cam belt. With Greer's retirement, that promoted Owen Murphy into third position. The weather was a bit hit and miss, and thinking it may rain, Murphy opted for a full wet tyre, and then the heavens refused to open. Three left tightens, into two left, 40, three right, and sudden bad square right tightens. Flat three left. It's been a train day, but uh, yeah, I'm delighted with the car. The car is fabulous. It's, uh, we were timing ourselves compared to the Sunbeam, and we were 20 seconds faster at miles gap than in the S car. So it is a, it's a different kettle of fish. So I think it'll be a couple of days learning. We had about 15 minutes testing compared to five days for the boys. So we're doing OK for, for two amateurs up against these guys. We're doing OK. The Sunbeam never, ever spun the wheels on me. And I've spent all weekend trying to stop this from spinning wheels. And when you're doing a fourth gear, the thing is drifting on it. So it's, uh, it is a huge power difference. But it's great fun to drive. And hopefully we can get out in it again. The Wales Motorsport fabrication prepared car of Robbie Barrable. Second time only for him in this car and now in fourth position overall, but he definitely needed to keep an eye on Neil Williams behind, who was just 1.6 seconds adrift of Barrable. A tight fight with two stages to go. Ryan Lochran's learning curve of left-hand drive machinery was a strong one. Up to eighth overall after stage six. Alan Ring and Adrian DC were in ninth and holding back a fighting pack. Three cars behind, all within eight seconds of each other. We catch up with co-driver Adrian at service. How's it been going out there? It's a good battle you've got going on right now. Yeah, it's a good battle there now. We've, we've had a better run there in the last couple of stages, albeit with a slight soft brake pedal. So we've addressed that here now. We've found some air in the system. So that's cost us a little bit of time. But even still, we've been getting a bit quicker, so I'm much happier with that. For Cahan McCourt, disaster would strike on stage four with an accident which blocked the road. Both crew were OK, but it was the end of their day. After what had been a fantastic run for Luke McCarthy, engine trouble on stage four forced his retirement. James Hall and Tony McCarthy were out in the iconic Audi Coupe Quattro, pushing the car to its absolute limit in places. Into the modified category now and continuing to extend their lead were Colin O'Donoghue and Sean Collins. Considering it's only been two years since his first ever rally, this really is some performance. Flat two left over crest, 40. Flat one left and flat one right.
right over crest 170. Flat to right over crest 200. Here, two right over crest flat, maybe 150 down the mid. Mind the braking. Caution. Slow to right into very slippy sharp four right and carry okay. And oh man, Sean. Mint. Oh my god. What a stage. I'm absolutely surprised at uh, how well we're actually going, so we'll keep going and uh, try our best. Gary Keenan and Darren O'Brien were giving it a good push on the stages. They had extended their advantage over McGee by stage five, but then lost some seconds on six. Getting close to top man O'Donoghue was proving difficult, but they weren't giving up. Fairness Colin is pulling away from us, he's driving very well, but uh, we're not going to let him away that easy, we're going to keep the push on him for these last two. Keeping the pressure on? Yeah, well it's two new stages, anything can happen, so we just push to the max and see where we go from there. 14.4 seconds separated McGee from Kiernan after the second loop of three stages. There was still all to play for here. Left, two left over small crest in the fence, 100. Watch, keep tight, two right. Oh, boy. Nicely done. Keep tight, two right. Tight, four left over crest. Sudden five right, three left. Narrows, 60. Flat one left, 200. How's the day been for you? Tell me how the experience here in Killarney has been this time around. I know, it's good. I've been here a good few times before. It's going grand. Like, yeah. you, you know, just not going hard enough. Like, boys are going very hard at the front, mm. but enjoying it, like, you know. It's really, really slippy. Um, but it's the same for everybody. Like, it's just, it is the way it is, but you don't know what the next corner is going to be like. Um, that makes it hard, but it's all part of the fun. For Ray Conlon, he had Aidan Buckley breathing down his neck after the opening tests. But the response was fast on the next three, with the gap to Buckley extended out now to 9.8 seconds. Still pretty close, however. Two left plus. Repeat, two left plus. 100. Middle, small jump one way. 230. Caress, jump at the top. You have 100. Big pull up. Turn hairpin right. Big goal cut. Big gun cut, 200. How's the day been for you? Uh, pretty good, yeah. yeah. Learning the car again. We haven't been out in six months and a lot of suspension changes since the last time, so yeah. we're just trying to get to grips with that. Yeah. We'll have a go now for the last two stages and hopefully come out at the end of it. Bit of blue sky coming out now. Yeah. It's time to dry out yeah. finally. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Time for some sticky tyres now, maybe. <laughs> Jason Pritchard is getting his first taste of Killarney and was a respectable six overall in the modified category. Two stages to go. How do you think it's been so far? How would you rate your own personal performance out there? Uh, unlike my, most of my school reports, could have done better. <laughs> <laughs> but no, getting into it now, um, it's a bit different from what we had last week for five days in the historic car, so it's drying up and I feel a bit more confident in the car, um, in the dry, so just wish there was a bit more mileage again now in the car. Pritchard was in a good battle with Connor Murphy, who had just dropped behind him on stage six. Only five and a half seconds are in it, though. The next two stages will be very interesting. It was an early bath for Wesley Patterson and Johnny Baird. The pair pulling out after stage five after they felt a vibration and didn't want to damage the car further. Charlie Hickey, one of the most experienced competitors here this weekend, sadly retired on stage five after damaging the rear axle of his rent to kill backed escort. Let's catch up with the leaderboards for both categories now ahead of the final two stages. The modified is headed by O'Donoghue with Kiernan in second and McGee in third. For the historic, it's Duggan who leads with Breen 10 seconds adrift and Murphy completing the top three. Join us after the break for the conclusion of this year's event. Welcome back with us here at the rent a killer initial Killarney Historic Rally. Anticipation is building as the event begins its final countdown. Preparations are well underway on the finish ramp, complete with big screen for the fans to watch the final stage play out.
The rally brings visitors from far and wide, but living just down the road in McCroom is Gerard Quinn. He's the senior manager of Ford Performance within Ford of Europe. For me, it's a busman's holiday, but you know, this is where I always come to, to see rallying at its best. And you know, my grandmother lived in Killarney and I've been coming here since the, the sort of early 70s to rallying. And, and for me, it kind of seeing these cars, particularly the Escort Mark II, kind of brings it all back and brings that emotion and that feeling. And it's, it's great, you know, and it's, it's great to see the cars turned out in such a professional way. But also, the, for the sport, it's fantastic because it's another level, it's another dimension of rallying, and it's great. It is great, and plenty have flocked to the hills this weekend to soak up the unique atmosphere this event affords. It's now time to catch up with some of the action further down the field with our local crews. As the final two stages loom, the trophies are being prepared. The Morris Nagel Perpetual Trophy is the one the crews are vying for. Created in honour of Morris's incredible contribution to this event from the beginning and rallying in general. A great man who is much missed. Morris's good friend, Mike Marshall, who has also been part of the event since its inception, now heads up Rally Control, making sure the event runs smoothly watched you at work today in the control centre with the radios. It, it seemed high pressure and a little tense. What, what's it like? It can be high pressure because the thing is, because of all terrain, we have to operate on three different radio channels. And if the stages are running at the same time, you're going to have a problem on one channel, you have another problem coming from somewhere else. Uh, you really need to be almost like a juggler or an octopus because you could be handling three, red, three microphones and probably two uh, mobile phones and an emergency phone. But like uh, since Mary Fitzgerald became involved helping me in the control room, it has made my life a lot easier. How do you see the event moving forward in future years? What else do you think is to come here? I think that uh, the first thing is as long as there's a clear understanding of what qualifies for historic because as more and more people understand these rules, more and more people are probably prepared to put cars together for them because uh, it's one of the areas where the, the cost won't escalate enormously. I mean, mainstream rallying is such like, it's almost become checkbook rallying, whereas you can only do so much with a true historic car. A clear vision for the future there. Let's now take a look at our class winners within the modified category. Dermot Lynch, who has never missed an event here with a novice co-driver alongside. Elena Looney, who won her place in a charity auction. They take second place in Class 1. Fast right over crest, 120. Easy left, 100. Car's all over the road, but it's fine. OK. Cut a fast right, 120. And taking the class win are John Barry and Eddie Byrne. The class two win goes to Colin Fitzgerald and Ian McCarthy in their Mark II Escort. In class three, taking the winner's mantle are Tommy McDonough and Paul Hickey. <laughs> Damien O'Reilly and Martin McGarrity take the honours in class four. And taking victory in Class 5 are Seamus Connolly and Gary McCrudden. Now we head into the top 10 overall in the modified category, starting with 10th, 
with Leonard Downey and Mark Murphy. Welshman Thomas and Eurig Davis finish ninth overall and just three and a half seconds behind Ender O'Brien and John Butler. On their fifth attempt at this event, they seal eighth. John O'Dugan and Kieran Marin take seventh overall in the modified category. On his first attempt here, Jason Pritchard and Phil Clark take sixth overall and best overseas crew. After a solid performance throughout the day from Connor Murphy and Kieran O'Donoghue, they slipped off the final stage and got stuck. A huge shame. Into the big top five now, and after a six-month drought of competition, Aidan and Shane Buckley take fifth overall. Ray Conlon and Damien Fleming had come close to losing their spot to Buckley after stage seven, but they take away fourth. The McGee's, Martin and David, were on course for a third place finish. However, there was a small overshoot, but they had bags of time in hand. A great result. Post stop to Kian. Left entry, make me lose. And straight press, 350. Kian turns square left over the hedge. 150 out of it. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry. It's alright, alright. 150, tight square right, keep tidy, 120. Taking second position and delivering another class performance with Gary Keenan and Darren O'Brien. But taking the overall honours with a winning advantage within the modified category of 19.3 seconds were Colin O'Donoghue and Sean Collins. Four and a slip in. An 80 over the bridge. Blackcrest over the finish. Well done, Carl Boyd. Yeah! So what a shorty boy. <laughs> A well-deserved victory for the pair. And Colin's dad, Kevin, is on hand to celebrate. <laughs> you told me earlier on, it's two years ago since your first rally here, just two years, and now you win the modified category here. What an achievement. Oh, absolutely thrilled. Uh, long history there with my father trying to follow him around and everything, so uh, I was absolutely class just to win it, like, you know? So, delighted. Now let's head into the historic class winners. First up in class B2, it's Colin McDowell and Brynmore Pierce in the Austin Mini, and they also scoop the best Mini Crew award. Class B3 sees the magnificent Ford Cortina with Tom and Helen Slattery. They take the honours there. Class C1 winners, Tom and Scott O'Brien, taking every inch of the road available in their dynamic Austin Mini. The classic Hillman Avenger in the hands of Mike Smith and Brian Commons took the Class C2 spoils. A popular crew reunited after almost 10 years apart took the Class C3 win, Pat Looney and Ronald Reardon. Mike Simpson and Dale Gibbons took the Class C5 victory. Declan Jackson and J. Barry McCarney were Class D3 victors. Hugh and Ellie Williams in the Peugeot 205 took the honours for Class E3. The sight and sound of the Opel Manta was one to behold. Belgian crew Paul Lieter and Mark Knopper would take class honours in E4. I, I, 
fantastic welcome from everyone here from you. They're always delighted to see international crews make their way to Kalani. Will you return? Oh, maybe next year. Eh? Uh, I think when we'll do a little bit more practice and uh, and what more uh, notes, uh, I think maybe uh, we can go faster. Into the historic top ten now, and it's Johnny O'Connor and Tommy Hayes who kick us off. Moving ahead of historic champion Duncan Williams on stage seven to seal tenth. To turn fast, square right, don't cut drive. Into three left, 100. Keep mid over bridge for line for three left plus. Dennis Cronin and Helen O'Sullivan are in ninth and had a great run over the final stage to be within just 4.8 seconds of eighth position, which was held by Martin Doherty and Kevin Flanagan. Keeping the fighting pack behind were Alan Ring and Adrian DC, a solid seventh position overall. A new experience for Ryan Lochran this weekend in a historic car. He and John McGrath finished sixth. <laughs> Robert Barrable and Damien Connolly continue their competitive quest in the escort. They slip to fifth overall on stage seven as Neil Williams and Anthony O'Sullivan moved into fourth position. It had been a tough start to the day for Owen Murphy, but crucially, he was loving the car by the end of it. He and Anthony walk away with third overall. Let's hope we see them out in the escort again soon. Craig Breen and Paul Nagel rounded off their competitive season here in Killarney by getting to grips with a true legend of a car. It's fair to say they've tried pretty much everything this year. They take second position, finishing 14.4 seconds behind our winners at this year's rent kill initial Killarney Historic Rally, Rob Duggan and Jer Conway. They led from the start, showing huge commitment and pace. Yeah, no, look, it's great. Um, Mike Mahoney there, he's great. He sponsors us all through the years, and uh, we want to thank him a lot for the support he gives us. And fair play to the Wales Motorsport boys as well. They put together a faultless car from the start of the test until this second. The only thing wrong with it is the exhaust from eating the ground so hard. So fair play to all the boys for keeping us on the straight and narrow. Without them, uh, we wouldn't be on this ramp. And fair play to Joe. He kept me, kept pushing me where we needed pushing. And, pulled me back when we needed to steady up a bit, so without all the team around us, we wouldn't be here up on the ramp this evening. Oh, it's unbelievable, especially um, it's a year since the two of us done a rally, and Rob has only one rally done this year, and to race the competition that we did today and win is great. And here is the confirmation of the results for our historic category, with Duggan taking the spoils. In the modified, it's Colin O'Donoghue with a stellar performance to take the home win. And that's it for this year's rent -a kill initial Killarney Historic Rally. We leave you with some action from what has been a truly first-class event. Until next time, thanks for watching.